Ms. Haber, our fourth grade teacher, gave us the end of the year essay assignment today. This essay is supposed to be on what the most important thing that happened to us this year. I mean, it's turned out to be harder than I thought. So much has happened with the fudge and dribble. Well, first things first. My name, are, my name is Peter Warren Hatcher, and before we can even begin this story, we better meet my family. This is my mom. Sometimes we get along and sometimes we don't. Most of the time, I think she's okay. She's studying now for a class in art history. When she gets a degree, she wants to work in an art gallery or a museum. This is my dad. He watches a lot of TV. Not because he likes it. He says most of the shows will fry your brain. He only watches the commercials because he's an advertising executive. Commercials are his business. This is my little brother, Farley Drexel Hatcher. Everybody calls him Fudge. I feel bad for him if he's growing up with a name like Fudge, but I don't say a word. It's none of my business. Fudge is always in my way. He messes up everything he sees. And when he's angry, he'll flop himself down on the floor and he'll bang his fist, he'll kick his feet. The only time I really like him is when he's sleepy. He wasn't even three when I brought Dribble home, and that's when it all began. Mom! Guess what I want at Jimmy Fargo's birthday party? What's that? Well, look. Honey, I'm really busy. Dad will be home with the yard in less than an hour. Peter, do something with Fudgy, please. The rack is giving me such a headache. Give those to me. No! Do what Peter says, Fudgy. Peter? What is that? Isn't he amazing? I guess how many jelly beans were in the jar, and I won the turtle. And I've already named him Dribble. Isn't that a great name for a turtle? I don't like the way he smells. So he smells like a turtle. That's what he is. I am not going to take care of him. Oh, of course you're not. He's my turtle. I'm the one who's going to be taking care of him. So you're going to change his water and clean his bowl and feed him and all that? Yeah. Fudgy, what's in your mouth? Show mommy. No! Fudge, oh, he ate a flower. Peter, watch him while I go call Dr. Cone. <laughs> Ooh, let me see. That's my turtle. Get it? Mine. You don't touch him, Fudge. Don't touch him, Fudge. <laughs> Mom! Dr. Cone said not to worry about the flowers. She told Mom to give Fudge a spoon of that yucky pink stuff when I have a stomach ache. By the time Dad came home to the Arby's, we were ready. Mr. Yarby's the president of the Juicy Oat Company, one of Dad's biggest clients. But I wouldn't want to insult Dad's client, but between you and me, Juicy was gross. Anyway, the Yarbys were coming to New York for a visit, and Dad thought they'd prefer to stay here than the hotel. Well, here they are, the Yarbys. Howard, I'd like to meet my wife. And, darling, Mr. and Mrs. Yarby. Hello, nice to meet you, welcome. Oh, is he the cutest little boy? I just love babies. And this is our older son, Peter. Hi, I'm Nine, and I'm in the fourth grade. How do you do, Peter? <laughs> I have a surprise for this dear little baby. It's in my suitcase. Should I go get it now? Yes, go get it. I kept waiting for someone to tell her that Fudge was no baby, but no one did. Ooh, goody. Why don't you stay here with me while I give you your presents? Really, Mrs. Yard, because it's very nice of you. I just love babies, and Fudge is so adorable. That is a nice play. I have something for you, too. Uh, uh... Peter. My name is Peter. Yes? <laughs> What's in here somewhere? Aha. I looked at my gift carefully to show Mrs. Yarby that I'm better with my things than fudge. She didn't even notice. <laughs> I don't know much about big boys, so the lady at the store said a nice book would be a good idea. A nice book would have been a good idea. But a picture dictionary, that's for babies. I've had my own Webster's Marion Collegiate since I was eight. Besides, I've had one of these since I was four. It's in Fudge's bookcase now. Thank you very much. It's just always what I wanted. Oh, uh, I'm so glad. What would you folks like a drink? Good idea, good idea. What'll it be? What'll it be, Hatcher? 
What do you think? It'll be juicier. That's all we have to drink. Good for your health. Of course, juicier for everybody. I'll take your bags into the bedroom first. Hatcher tells me you're taking classes. Yes, I am. I'm studying art history. Mine with two growing boys. <laughs> See? I wanted to vanish. See the book? That's okay. I can use another one. Really, that old one is falling apart. No! It's mine! It's mine! It's the thought that counts, really, Mrs. Yarby. It was a very nice to think of our boys. Put the book away now, Fudgy. <coughs> Really, it's returnable. It's silly to keep it if you already have one. Let me have it back. No, I'll keep it. Why it was my fault she brought me something I already had. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it Fudge's bedtime? Oh, yes, I think it is. <laughs> Say goodnight, Fudge. Good night, Fudge. <laughs> Fudge was supposed to fall asleep and stay asleep, but just in case, Mom put a lot of toys in his crib. I do not know who she thought she was fooling. We all knew that Budge could climb, up, climb out of his crib anytime he wanted. He stayed away until we had finished our juicio. See, Dribble? <gasps> I can't stand Greg Towns. Get that thing away from me. Catcher, make him get that thing out of here. Give Dribble to me. You know you're not allowed to touch my turtle. Please, please, remove the reptile. It's making me ill. Go put Dribble back in your room, son. <laughs> and I will put Fudge back in his crib. Excuse me a moment. It must be interesting to have children. We never had any ourselves. But if we did, we'd teach him some manners. I'm a firm believer in old-fashioned good manners. So are we, Howard. So are we. <laughs> <laughs> I think Mr. Yarby had a lot of nerve to suggest we had no manners. Didn't I pretend to like their dumb old picture dictionary? <laughs> well, anyway, Mom got Fudge back into his crib, and things were okay until... <laughs> that is not... said she likes to bite people. <laughs> this is Ralph. He eats a lot. He doesn't say much either. Usually when I see him playing with Fudge, he's just grunting and grabbing, and his mouth is stuffed with something. This is Sarah. She <laughs> cries a lot. Everything scares her, especially birthday parties. She kept on screaming, take me home, take me home, take me home. Okay, that's enough. Okay, let's start the party. Remember, a fighter, an eater, and a crier. <laughs> get it off, get it off! Mom, doesn't Fudge have any normal friends? 
All small children are like that. Here's the birthday cake. <laughs> Mom, look what he did. It's his birthday. He can do whatever he wants. There he goes again. Where's my rose? I want one too. I'm sorry, Jenny. There aren't enough roses to go around. They're only decorations anyway. Decorations. That's a good girl. <laughs> more cake. More cake. More, 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 more. Ow, Mom, she bit me. Did it break the skin? No, I don't think so. Then there's nothing to worry about. <laughs> Ugh. Ugh. Ah! Mom, Ralph just sneezed all over Sarah. Oh, what a mess. Peter, take the kids into the living room while I clean this up. Play some games. Which one? Start with, uh, if you're happy to know it. Why? Peter. Come on, Mom. Please. Mom. <clears throat> Peter. Fine. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. I felt like the world's greatest living fool. <laughs> if you're happy and you know it, if your face is surely showing. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. What a bunch of monkeys. <laughs> Dribble. Mom, Dribble's my pet. You don't go around entertaining little kids with my pet. But I don't know what to do with them. Dribble, 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 dribble. You have to be quiet. But Peter's right. You have to be very quiet. Or you might scare Dribble. Everybody make a Yes, Dribble's a turtle. See? They can all see. Nice turtle. What does Dribble do? Do? He doesn't do anything special. He does turtle things. Like what? Well, he swims around a little, he sleeps on his rock, and he eats. Does he make? Make? Make a tinkle. <laughs> oh, that. Well, I guess so. Sure. I make tinkles. Do you? Aw. <laughs> <laughs> well, the party was over by that time anyway. Ralph fell asleep on the floor, so when his mom came, she had to pick him up. And when Sarah's mom came, she started hollering again. More party! More party! Don't want to go! You get the idea. After me and mom were done cleaning up the mess, we sat on the chair. Hey, Peter. Yeah, Mom? Thanks for helping today. I could not have done without you. Well, I guess three's kind of young for a party. Peter Warren Hatcher, you are absolutely right. <laughs> Saturday has always been the best day of my week. Every Saturday morning, I clean up Google's bowl, and if Fudge is very good, I let him watch. But this Saturday, I was not looking forward to my day. Hurry up, we'll be late. Why do I have to go to the dentist with Fudge? I'd rather go play. It'll be fun. We'll get new shoes for both of you, and then we'll go out for lunch. Now let's get going or we'll be late for Fudge's appointment with Dr. Brown. Dr. Brown is our family dentist. She's okay. She went to school with Dad, so whenever she sees me, she's always telling me what a chip off the old block I am. <laughs> How's my favorite patient? It burns me up the way people treat Fudge. He's not so special. He's just little. That's all. Fudge, Dr. Brown is ready for you now. Dr. Brown has this rule about mothers in the examining room. They're not allowed. Dr. Brown told me once that mothers are a big problem. I agree sometimes. <laughs> Anne! Hey, Peter. Dr. Brown needs you to help her with fudge. Help her? I'm no dentist. <laughs> Peter, if you'll just come with me, I'm sure everything will work out just fine. What do I have to do? All Dr. Brown wants you to do is show Fudge how she checks your teeth. What do I have to do that for? I just had a checkup. Well, you see, Fudge won't open his mouth this morning. He won't? No, he won't. <laughs> <laughs> I've never considered refusing to open my mouth at the doctor's office. When she says open, I open. <laughs> ah, 
Peter, would you open your mouth so I can count your teeth? That's what she tells little kids she's doing, counting their teeth. Trust me, little kids will believe anything. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful teeth, just beautiful. A regular chip off the old block. Such a shame your brother Cana would have knocked the way you do. Can't so? No, I'm sorry. You can't open your mouth nearly so as well as Peter can. I can't so. See? No, I'm sorry, but it's still not as good as Peter. Doctor, count my teeth. Count my teeth. Doctor, doctor, count my teeth. Well, I guess as long as you're here, I might as well count your teeth. <laughs> Just like Peter's. Yes, I can see that you're just like Peter. Hop down now, Fudge, you're done. Oh, Peter, I'm not quite done with you yet. Mom made another appointment for Fudge while the nurse kissed him goodbye, and Dr. Brown filled my cavity. Great. Then we headed to Plymouth News, where we did our shoes. There are five salespeople in the shoe department. There's one she likes a lot. Her name is Vicky. I like her too. Well, but isn't the Hatcher voice? Hi, Vicky. Little bee voice, red sneakers for Fudge, and loafers for Peter. Okay, Peter, let's see how those dogs have grown. This is why Mom likes Vicky so much. He's so <laughs> careful. Mom says feet can be different sizes on the same person. Vicky makes sure the foot meets the biggest size. Now, what color loafers, Peter? Brown, same as my old one. Okay, you're the boss. Peter! Why didn't you tell me you had a hole in your sock? I didn't know I had one. I'm so embarrassed. Why should you be embarrassed, Mom? It's a sock. <laughs> <laughs> it just looks terrible. Terrible. I mean, to you shopping with shoes with a hole in your sock? That's just awful. Awful. Can't you hide it a little? Well, how do you hide a hole? Try and get me between the toes so it doesn't show. <laughs> These fit fine. Okay, Fudge, your turn. No! No what? No shoes! You need, don't be silly, Fudge, you need new shoes. Your old ones, you need new shoes. No shoes! No, no, no! Here's the perfect size, and wait till you see how nice these new shoes feel. No shoes! No, no, no! What kinds do you want? Because we are not leaving to here until you have new shoes. We could be here the rest of the day. Or the week. Peter! Well, I don't see why you made such a big deal of a little hole in my sock. And now you're letting Fudge flop on the floor and sulk. <laughs> Fudge, I'm going to count to three. And you have to tell me what shoes you want. Are you ready? One, two. Like Peter's? I guess the little guy looks up to me. Loafers don't come in your size. Yes! I have an idea. I'm not going to like this. <laughs> you see, I think we have to play a little joke on Fudge. Suppose Vicky brought out a pair of red sneakers in your size, and then you are not going to get me to wear red sneakers, never. Let me finish. Vicky can bring them out, and you can try them on, and Fudge will think that's what you're getting. But when we leave, we'll take the loaf and his That's mean. You're taking advantage of him. Look, Peter, it's. 1.30 and I'm starved. Me too. <laughs> if we ever want to get out of, get out of here, try it. Okay, okay. Like pitas? Yeah, sure, Fudge. Oh. <laughs> See, Peter's nice red sneakers. Now, Fudgy tries on his nice red sneakers. <laughs> Just like peanuts! Yeah, just like mine, Fudge. You sure can fool little kids easily. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Hi, Pete. Oh. Uh, boy. <laughs> This paper sure can give us some tough essay assignments. Like the last one when our fourth grade class started a project called The City. Ms. Haver grouped us up into committees about where we live. This is 
Jimmy and Sheila both live in my building, we were a committee. Our topic was called Transportation in the City. After two weeks, we had to hand in a booklet, a poster, and be ready to give an oral report. After the first day of school, we got together, but Sheila had already bought the poster board. But it's yellow! Yes, so what? I wanted blue! Yellow is much a brighter color. Everything will show up on it. Blue is too dull. Sheila thinks she's smarter than Jimmy and me because she's a girl. <laughs> <laughs> and I've also decided that I'll be in charge of the booklet. And you guys can do the poster as long as you check with me first. Why? <laughs> to make sure I like your ideas. What do we get out of it? I'll do 10 pages of written work and you guys can split the rest. What do you think, Peter? Sounds okay to me. Good. Jimmy and I went to the library Saturday and got out some books. And I got a shoebox and some supplies to keep it in. I got a set of magic markers, Elmer's glue, scotch tape, and a pair of real sharp scissors. Let me see those. Okay. Let's get started. Jimmy, you and Peter can go ahead and start on the poster. I'm the mad butcher. I cut cooties out of ugly girls' hair. Jimmy! <laughs> cooties, cooties. Oh, I hate you. What's going on here? Nothing, Mom. Well, it doesn't sound like you kids are working. We are. Jimmy Fargo, what are you doing with those scissors? Nothing, Mrs. Hatcher. Well, be careful, Stem. Remember, I want everything cleaned up and put away by five. Yes, Mom. We will, Miss Hatcher. We will, Miss Hatcher. Oh, I got something absolutely the worst to me possible. You know, you aren't much fun hanging around either. At our third meeting, I told Sheila and Jimmy I found out the solution to New York's traffic problem. Oh, yeah? What's that? We have to get rid of traffic. There shouldn't be any buses, taxis, or cars allowed in the city. <laughs> That's impossible. How would people get around? What we need is a city-wide monorail system. That's too expensive. It's not practical. A monorail system is the hope of the future. <laughs> we can't write a report just about the monorail system. We'll never be able to fill 20 written pages with that. We can write big. No. I want to get a good grade on this project. Peter, you can write your five pages on the monorail system. Jimmy, you can write your five pages about pollution. What will you write about? How to be bossy? I'll write my ten pages on the history and transportation in the state. Can I write big? I don't care how big you write as long as you write your name on your five pages. That's not fair. This is supposed to be a group project. Then don't write big. Okay, okay. I'll write so small, Mrs. Hayes will have to use a microscope to see the letters. Very funny. I forgot to laugh. <laughs> Look, I think all of our written work should be done in the same handwriting. Otherwise, Miss Haver will know who did what. That's a good idea. Which of us has the best handwriting? Well, I do have a nice even script. But if I'm going to copy your written work, you'd better give it to me by next Tuesday. And you two had better get started on the poster now. By the end of the first week, Jimmy and I had designed all of the posts ourselves. We used all the kinds of pros and cons of each kind of transportation. See, land, sea, air. We're not quite done yet, but when Sheila saw it. Is that supposed to be a train? No, it's a truck. It doesn't look like a truck to me. It looks like a flying train. That's because the ground's not under it yet. Yeah, it kind of looks like it's up in space. So does the ship. We'll put more water lines around it. And some clouds around the plane. Listen, has anyone ever told you you're too bossy? I think you and Peter have mentioned it before. Listen, the poster is ours. You want to do the, book, the booklet. Remember, that's the way you wanted it. See, there you go again. You keep forgetting this is a committee. We're supposed to work. Together. That doesn't mean you give the orders and we carry them out. My thoughts exactly. 
I know Sheila never comes back. Hey, Peter, can I play the dribble? I never let anybody else touch him. Come on, I'm your best friend. Yeah, you're right. Just be careful. Thanks, man. I'm glad the next week is our last week. I'm sick of Sheila and transportation. Me too. Besides, now that I know a monorail system is the only way to save our future in transportation, how come the mayor or the guys at City Hall aren't doing anything to install one? I don't know, Peter. I don't know. Well, I better be going. See you, Jimmy. Um, see you, Peter. Okay, Jimmy. What are you doing in my room? Look, Peter. Pretty. It's ruined. I could kill you. Mom, Mom, just look what he did to my poster. How could you let him? How? Don't you care about me? Peter. Peter, I'm sorry. Peter, will you look at me? Don't you see, Mom? I can't even do my homework without him messing it up. I wish he had never been born. Never. I hate him. You do not hate him. You're angry. But had no right to touch your poster. I'll put him in timeout. Really? Yes. Y'all don't believe in grounding. Really? Sure. <coughs> Peter, I will. I'll buy you a new poster for tomorrow. At the next day at school, I told Jimmy we had to redo the poster. He was a good sport about it. This time, he'd make sure his truck didn't look like a flying train. So, that afternoon, Jimmy and I finished up the poster while Sheila copied our written work into the booklet. And the next day at school, Miss Haber said we did a super job. She liked her poster a lot. The only thing she wondered about was why did we include a picture of a flying train? <laughs> the next week, we didn't have school on Friday. My mom's sister, my Aunt Linda, who lives in Boston, just had a baby. So my mom went there to fly and visit her. Dad took me to his office downtown. Dad has his own secretary. Her name is Janet. I think Janet's pretty. Huh. Janet, the boys are going to be with me today. Do you mind showing them around and clear up things for the Tunnel White commercial? Sure, Mr. Hatcher. I'll take the boys on the tour of the agency. Great. Thanks, Janet. Let's see what kind of trouble we can get into. <laughs> Is this a daycare center or what? <laughs> <laughs> They're here to try over the new Tunnel White commercial. <laughs> Who does the picking? Your father, Mrs. Denberg, are doing it, but of course Mrs. Vincent, the president of the Light Company, has to approve. That's her. There he is. That's the kid I want. She means me. <laughs> Warren, come in here. He's perfect, just perfect. But Mrs. Vincent, the perfect kid to ride in my new Tottlebike. Hi, Daddy. Gee. <laughs> this is my son. He's not an actor. It doesn't matter. He's perfect. Now look, Gene. We want to make the best possible commercial for your company. But Fudge can't be the kids who ride the toddle bike. Now you listen, Warren. Either this kid rides my toddle bike, or I think this catch another advertising agency. It's that simple. <laughs> it's your decision, Warren. I don't want to be the one to tell you what to do. All right. Well, everybody, let's get started. Dad, is Fudge going to get paid? I'll worry about that, son. He probably meant yes, which means Fudge should be paid and be famous and have lots and lots of money in the bank. And I'd have nothing. And someday, I'd have to borrow from him. No, wait a minute. Never. I'd never borrow from Fudge. I'd starve first. <laughs> okay, Fudge. All you have to do is ride the tunnel bike around. Okay? Ha, 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 ha.
Donald Day to fool around. Okay, kid. All ready now? You ride over to me.
ambulance guys thought it was pretty funny. Henry, our elevator operator, thought it was pretty funny. But I didn't think it was funny. Dribble was my turtle. <coughs> once, we got, once we got to the hospital, everyone disappeared. There wasn't any magazines or books like at Dr. Cohen's office. So I sat down and I stared at the signs on the wall. And then I looked at the clock. An hour, an hour and 10 minutes had passed. I wondered what they were doing to Fudge. I was kind of scared for him. Maybe he's not such a bad little kid after all. Hello, Peter. Hi, Dr. Cohen. Did you get my turtle? Not yet, Peter, but I have something to tell you. Here's some extras of your brother. See, don't you turtle right there. Would be there forever? No, definitely not. We'll get him out. We yeah, ain't put some medicine already. It'll help you dribble out. We'll just have to wait now. Will dribble be okay? We may have to get a new turtle, Peter. I don't want a new turtle. <laughs> I want dribble. <laughs> It's not that easy being green. <laughs> Each day, the color of the leaf. When I think it could be nicer being red, yellow, gold, or something much more colorful like that. Mom took me home in a taxi, and she and Dad took turns staying at the hotel. Mom fed me my favorite food, lamb chops, but I wasn't hungry. I even missed fudge banging on the pots and pans. <laughs> yes! At last, medicine finally worked! The turtle's out! Thank you so much. <laughs> Dead or alive? <laughs> Peter Wornhatcher, what a question. Fudge came home the next day. It was disgusting! All those kisses and gifts and attention. I couldn't even look at him. He was probably having fun. He wasn't even sorry he ate my turtle. <laughs> Peter, there's something here for you. I don't want a present. Peter, it's not just any present. You really think you can make me happy with another turtle? Because you can't. Who said anything about a turtle? Peter, your father and I have decided that you've been such a good sport about the whole situation. After all, Dribble was your pet. Wow! Ooh, doggy! <laughs> Ha, ha, ha. 